And welcome back to News on the fight over whether to keep the filibuster. Well, that continues once again in the Senate. While Senators Kristen Sinema and Joe Manchin have voiced their support to keep the filibuster, according to a recent report from our partners at Just the News from Nick Ballacy, that number may increase by one more Democratic senator. Take a look. Arizona Senator Kirsten Sinema is opposed to eliminating the legislative filibuster, which is the 60-vote threshold for legislation to advance in the Senate. Just the News asked Arizona Senator Mark Kelly where he stands on the issue. I, I, I served in the Navy for 25 years. I've been here about six months. And the United States Senate you know, doesn't function like any other organization I've ever seen. Not very efficient. Having said that, I'll look at you know any proposal and evaluate it, not based on what's in the best interest of just Democrats, but what's in the best, best interest of Democrats, Republicans, the country, Arizona. Thank you. All right, and joining us live now to weigh in on this and so much more is former Obama campaign director Robin Biro and CEO and founder of the stock swoosh, Melissa Armo. Thank you both for joining us here on this Monday. So, Robin, let's start with you. What do you think of Kelly's response? Obviously not an endorsement uh, when it comes to the Senate, uh, to say the least, but is it potentially in the interest of the American people regardless of which party you affiliate with, to keep the filibuster intact, in your opinion? Yes, I think that we do need to keep the filibuster intact. I, I've examined this. I've talked to, to colleagues and peers uh, and le great legal minds. And there really is not an efficient way to, to do away with this. And Democrats, my party, hear me out. If we do away with this, it's going to back and haunt us later because it can be used against us if and when we lose a majority. Uh, so it's not a good idea, but I do think we should go back to a talking filibuster. I think they should have to work for it and earn it. It worked for, what, over 100 years? We got rid of it just a couple decades ago. Go back to the talking filibuster. But I have to say before I go, congratulations to Senator Mark Kelly for calling it like it is. That the Senate is broken and it does not function as smoothly as our military. There you go. All right, uh, Melissa. Oh, wait, before you do that, Robin, are you referring to like the days when, was it Dr. Seuss that Ted Cruz was reading once? Was that it? Is that what I'm... <laughs> but you I, sure? But the, the idea of the talking filibuster is that they are supposed to voice their opposition. Now, it was abused by some senators who did read talk with the Dr. Seuss books, but the idea is to sit, to stand there, not leave your post, and actually work for that filibuster, not just email it in, Miranda. Okay, I didn't know if you were just a big fan of the Dr. Seuss books. I just wanted to clarify that. Of course, I'm joking. Um, Melissa, but in all seriousness, what is your response to what, what Kelly had to say? And do you believe, like what Robin does, that this will, the pendulum will swing and it will basically come back to bite Democrats in that you know where uh, when Republicans do take back the Senate and the House? Well, his answer really was a non-answer. He didn't want to commit to anything. But Robin and I agree on this issue. Uh, Robin and I agree on many things, despite the fact that we're different political sides of the aisle, which is very interesting. Why? Because we're both moderates at the end of the day. And I think most of the American people are moderates, too. And so, you know, you can't have, when you have one party control, where it seems like we have that almost right now, I mean, it's, it, that's what it feels like. You, you have to have people making the arguments. And a lot of times the American people do want to hear what their senators and congressmen say and have to say. I mean, I think that it has to be open for debate. So that's my opinion on it. Yes, sometimes it may be mismanaged, but at the end of the day, I think it will come back to bite them because you're not going to have a Democratic control forever. Yeah, and Melissa, I think it's interesting you say that because um, going back, you know, a while ago, I remember a news director uh, talking to us as reporters and saying, try not to always show the one extreme or the other sides because most of Americans fit somewhere in the middle. So I think you bring up a good point there. Uh, Robin, do you think more Democrats, however, will come out in support of the filibuster? Um, do you think they will? I mean, as she mentioned, she didn't think Mark Kelly was necessarily giving a affirmative answer one way or the other. 
Yeah, that I, that did sound pretty wishy-washy to me, uh, but I appreciated his anecdotal story about how, you know, having served in, I believe it was the Navy, that the, he doesn't he hasn't seen any organization function as badly as the Senate does. I'm glad to hear somebody actually voice that. I don't think that we're going to see many more Democrats jump on board with this. Uh, I think that we should see much many more of them, though, go advocate for the talking filibuster. If you'll recall, in his first presidential address as president, Joe Biden, President Biden, called for a return to the talking filibuster. I hope that we have more discussion about that. I think it might be interesting, Melissa, could you chime in here real quick, that Biden, of all people, would call for the talking of the filibuster. But uh, I'll, I'll leave it there because we do have to move on. So on the topic of Democrats, uh, many concerned about their infrastructure plan and what it could change when it comes to the suburbs, because while the new bipartisan deal is void of affordable housing, some worry Democrats could use the reconciliation bill to force through a more far left, if you will, agenda that may bring unwanted changes to the American suburbs. So former New York Lieutenant Governor, to uh, help address this point, Betsy McCoy explained that concern to our very own John Solomon during his podcast. Take a listen. You know, people spend a lifetime dreaming that they're going to have a home with a plot of lawn around it, quarter acre, half acre, whatever it is. Sure. They can let their kids play on the lawn, go out and mow the lawn. It's a way of life. Yeah. And the Biden administration wants to eliminate that. They, their message is, you can't have that unless everybody can have that. So unless you have multi-family units, you know, some sort of apartment building on the same street, in the same neighborhood. It's not the same town because all towns now have areas. Oh, sure. Apartment dwellers, yeah. you know. But, no, that's not good enough for them. They want to put bus lines on all the little streets, and that's going to change the way of life. And it's not just they, – they're, they're trying to make it a racial issue, but people of all ethnicities dream of having a single-family home. That's not a white thing. That's that's a way of life. It's an yep. American way of life. Melissa, I'm interested to hear what you had to say, having grown up in the suburbs of Kansas. Love to hear your thoughts on that. I actually grew up in Pennsylvania, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Like, yeah. But anyways, I want to speak to this because this is happening in New York. It's happening in New York right now. There's two specific spots in New York I want to talk about right on billionaires row right next to the park hyatt the brand new park hyatt the city has zoned and, the, and they were fighting this the residents of this building were fighting this they're putting in a homeless shelter the values of those properties now have gone downhill that's what's going to happen if they end up doing this not only will it affect some of the safety issues but it's going to affect the property values which is going to hurt people, and people are going to be very upset about that as well. Also, there's another but, but area. But, Melissa, let me ask you real quick, because we're tight on time. What's specific in this bill, though? Because I didn't hear Betsy McCoy name something specific. What specifically in this bill could make that happen? Well, I guess they're changing the zoning. I guess they're changing the zoning. They're zoning that they want these multifamily homes. Uh, they're basically apartment units that they want the, to be able to be in nice areas. Like what I was going to say with Hudson Yards. I grew uh, up in an like, apartment. Related got a tax break for a mul to build a multifamily unit, which is brand brand new. Okay, many of these are dilapidated in, in the city to be in that area. Well, that again isn't what some of the residents want to see because the rents are going to be for subsidized housing. You understand? So there, they got a tax break to do that. The related did. So this is what's going to happen. You're going to have the property values go down. What specifically is going to change is they're going to change the zoning where they can be built there, and then they may get some tax breaks for it. But that doesn't help the residents. The residents that already own the property there, it's a safety issue, and then it hurts the value. Robin, I want you to respond to this, but we're coming up against a commercial break, so I want yeah. to give you enough time, but I'm really curious to know your thoughts because, again, I grew up in the suburbs. I grew up in an apartment complex, and, yes, I grew up in Section 8 housing. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, so we're going to get Robin to respond to that coming up right after the break. We also have a lot more to get to also coming up. We're going to weigh in on a controversial law affecting female prison inmates in California. This is very interesting. Uh, we're gonna get both of them to weigh in. You can always weigh in on any of the topics that you hear on this program. Would love to know your thoughts. You can do that by finding me at Real Miranda Khan. 
Hashtag share your voice. We'll be right back. You're watching News On.